Hello everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Today we have a Robinson adjustable curved wrench. You've all seen them before. These have become pretty popular over the last few years, so uh, let's check it okay, out. Here we have a, a Robinson 10 inch model. You can see here, 10 inches. And uh, this one here is a, a very popular wrench recently, and I don't know why, uh, you know, it, it has a thin profile. You know, some of the older wrenches here, had a thicker profile which was much easier on the hand but uh, this one here had a thin profile and yet it's very popular with the collector I don't know why like I said uh, I don't know it's, you know what makes something more collectible than others right okay so um, the I date this wrench the uh, Robinson wrenches this was patented somewhere around the 1880s and that area uh, there's a few different patents why they came out with that S, S design I don't know, and I can't figure it out because, quite honestly, they're not as ergonomic as the straight ones. I, I like the straight ones better, but maybe uh, to stop guys from banging their knuckles. I don't know what it was. So let's take a look at this wrench real quick, the condition it's in. <clears throat> we have some some rusting, <clears throat> some pattern uh, casting marks. Uh, here's a pin there that looks like it'll pop out easily, hopefully. And other than that, it looks like it just needs a good, a lot of gunk in that thumb wheel, huh? And it's very hard to turn. I mean, so it's, uh, and, and the jaws, there's a big chip in there. I can't do nothing with that chip. I mean, if, I wish I had a TIG welder or something that I could just put a little dip of weld in there and then grind it down. <clears throat> but I'm not going to grind an eighth of an inch off that jaw just to, to make it straight. Uh, we'll address the jaw damage here and let's get started. Now, here's something interesting. The pin that uh, is holding the thumb wheel in place has a dome top or a pointed top now anytime you try and put a punch on there you're gonna have a trouble it's gonna be slipping off well that's where you have a bunch of different nail sets in your collection this one here is a 532nd you see that punch how it has a little dimple in it that fits right over there and then we'll spray some penetrating oil on there and knock that down once it gets down about an eighth of an inch a quarter of an inch inside that hole then we can use a regular straight punch okay as expected uh we knocked that clear we were able to break it free with this domed punch but you could see now because of the taper of the punch it's going to lock into that hole and that's where we get a pin punch pin punch has a straight shaft that goes down and then we will finish knocking that pin right out one two three and there we go no problem okay believe it or not we just spent a half an hour just getting all the residual grease off of these parts especially this wheel I mean just digging the grease out of there we didn't even take it to the wire brush or anything yet just cleaning it you don't want to contaminate your wire brush so let's hold over the wire brush now and uh, clean it up Okay, now we have to work on this jaw. Now you see how it's uh, banged up. This came out real nice, right off the wire brush. But you see how here it's raised up. Now, uh, a couple ways you could do that. The best way I have found is to just give it a little bit of heat, just a little bit. Not enough to change the temper, or you can't hold it, just attach. And then, Put this over here and with a hammer just striking it towards the front just bang that back down you gotta have something like an, an either an anvil or a uh like i this is a piece of railroad track and uh you don't see what happens here see how we're forming that back see how that that lip we're, we're bending it back and then we hit it with a file and get that nice and straight so that's the way I found it. Okay, easiest. we're about two hours into the restoration. We um, we addressed the jaw. You see, we knocked that down. So now we're going to take it over to the belt sander, and uh, we got the wheel nice. We got everything looking good. Um, now look at the casting. See, this is one. This is the things you don't realize. You see all them dents and dings and all the cast, especially on the edges. Remember what? The, look back here. You know that's where it was used as a hammer over the years, and and these big chips and gouges and everything in here. You know that you can't just buff them out you know so you have to either go deep with the belt sander or just live with it so let's see what we can do okay we're calling this wrench finished uh we didn't put any accent red in there because there's no lip that would define the paint line so 
you just it, it wouldn't look right and it wouldn't last long so you could see how the edge came out you see all the, the beat marks and everything we try and take out as much as we can but you can only do so much when you have a wrench that uh, that has this many hours on it uh, you could see we got it down to a, a mirrored finish here it's so smooth now it's just but it, I'm telling you buttery smooth so nice and uh, from what it was it's uh, it came out pretty good and let's give it a try on the nut tester okay we have the Robinson here at the uh, the nut and wrench tester and uh, we'll just put it on here snug it up and give it a okay jaws work very nicely um, I'm not a big fan of these S wrenches, you know, they, they just don't feel 100% right now. Maybe those guys that used to work on tractors and things like that, and, you know, they had a lot more room to work on. I don't know, but they are interesting to look at, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to be trading my straight ones for them. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this restoration. Thanks very much for tuning in. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.